Alright guys, so for this video, I really want to talk about the other side of the hobby, and that is collecting. We are collectors. We we collect role-playing games, and we collect accessories. Most of us do, anyways. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy. To me, it's kind of like having, it. I really own, I feel, a role-playing game library. And I'll go over these little different things in a second, but, you know, it's a side of the hobby I don't see anyone talking about in uh, their own uh, videos on their channels. And I think it's something important, because it is a part of the hobby, and it's something fun to share with other people. And you know, I've loaned people books, people that I knew in college that were just getting into the hobby, and I probably won't see them again. We kind of went our separate ways, you know, I didn't go back one semester when they expected me to, and, you know, they probably are going to keep that book for the rest of their life. And, you know, I've left, I think someone else has my, um, battle grid and, you know, the, um, GM screen or whatever. I'm not that mad about it. You know why? Because it's just stuff. But it's the fun and the free-spiritedness and the creativity that they represent that makes me happy. All the times I've spent playing D&D &D with my friends around the table, that's the real value of this book to me. Now don't get me wrong, there is a certain value in just the books themselves. For example, Shadowrun has got beautiful artwork and pretty nice glossy pages. Dark Heresy, uh, I really feel, I really get a good sense of the setting just from the art in that book and the religious connotations of Blood of Martyrs adds a certain severity and intensity to the various orders that I previously only skimmed over. Um, Blue Rose, I enjoyed just reading this one. It's a very interesting setting with very interesting lore. It is an egalitarian setting. Everyone is equal. And they have very interesting social concepts. You know, to be honest, I haven't actually played that or that with other people. Tried to, but, you know, games fall through. Um, I've briefly tried to run Shadowrun, and I bought a lot of stuff for it, you know, kind of all at two different times. I, d I bought sh that in the GM screen, then I think I bought... No, I, I ordered them at separate times, but they came at the same time, or something like that. I ended up ordering Basic Fantasy and the core book for Savage Worlds at the same time. That was a nice, fun order. But, you know, some of these I picked up at the game store, some I ordered, but it's kind of the experiences that go along with it. Um, there's a couple here you don't see because they're PDFs. I'm still waiting on my copy of um, Hell on Earth Reloaded to arrive. And, you know, I've already read through it on the PDF. I've already experienced that setting. I've already gone there. I've already... You know, I've read everything in that book. Literally read the entire book. And I feel... I don't know, I feel creatively inspired. I just It inspires a certain creativity in me, like, going to these other worlds. It's like getting lost in a book. Only the book doesn't end with the last page, with these types of games, role-playing games. And you have to be careful not to get lost in that. This is a what to most people might seem like a sizable collection, I suppose, but this was built over time. For a very long time, I only owned that book. Then later, I bought those two. Then... Kind of on impulse, I bought this. I think it might have been $25, Blue Rose. That I think it was like 30 or something. Maybe less. Um, that was 880 <laughs> You know, just here and there. Dark Heresy. With big books like this, you're generally going to get... What you're really paying for, aside from the game itself, is a hardback, full-color book. That's really the... Really, because books that don't have as much color, that are black and white like this still can take you to amazing places. But they're not as pretty to look at, but they are cheaper as a result. And let's talk about accessories while we're talking about nerd hobbies. Just Because, if anything, role-playing games are closely associated with board games. And that's another hobby I'm really interested in and a big fan of. So, here in my closet, we've got my other collection. I'm actually probably going to donate this to a church. It's a Christian-based RPG. I found it and picked it up. I'm actually an atheist, and I don't really intend to play it. I bought it at a different point in my life. I think I had planned to play it a few times, but never did. But I think it's time I pass it on to someone who will get more, have more fun with it, because that's what this hobby's all about. I've also got Dragon Age in here. That's a role-playing game that came in a box. I played that with friends. That was fun. I played all of these with friends. Wonderland, Dungeon, Tannhauser, 
Leviathans, Dust. I haven't actually played Edge of the Empire. Wasn't disappointed with buying it though. This is where I keep most of my actual. That's actually a spare um, uh, cable box. I've just been keeping in my room. Me and my dad have been meaning to, you know, meaning to set it up with the cable, and we just haven't run the cable yet. But you know, just again, life happens, you know, man. So just kind of giving a more realistic side to the hobby. These were, from my previous video, the dice boxes that I used for kits and stuff. I keep them. You know, little notes. I think this is a previous character, maybe. Nope. Just a little note. But, you know, here's all my little minis. You know, my sister bought this for me. Me and her have kind of honestly had a falling out. I don't really speak with her much, but I've still got it. And, you know... Like, this box brings back memories. Like, we found this character sheet. We found a character sheet in here. Not this one, but a different one. And it's just... The guy had filled it out wrong, and I just remember everyone at the table was laughing about it. It just... These aren't just things. They kind of... Re it's the things they represent that really draw us to the hobby, and I think that's something that needs to be talked about. I mean, this is just a book. It's just paper. It, yeah, it's my D&D book, but I can replace it. It doesn't matter. And, you know, there are certain friends who I've played with and then kind of realized a lot of people in our hobby do have mental issues, and that is something you need to address. So you shouldn't ever compare your collection to someone else's, because there are people who will spend all of their money on a collection a day. I've seen people who really can't help it who will spend and try to find ways to spend more and more money on things they want. I myself can be fairly impulsive, but again, I'm balancing my own hobbies with spending time with my girlfriend. For example, I also love shooting, and that's a hobby I share with her. For our first... Ah, oh, come on. For our first date, we went to the shooting range. I tried to tape the wall, and now it's getting stuck. There we go. We bought targets and ammo. I aimed for the head, she aimed for the belt line. But you know, she signed it. And you know, that's another hobby I have, is shooting. And you know, it's kind of like buying a gun. It kind of is, because a lot of people will buy a gun or a hunting rifle or whatever, and they'll buy the shiniest one in the store, but you know, these things, they get scratched and the bindings wear out and when you use a gun the barrel gets dirty and if you don't clean it it rusts you know you can clean a gun and replace the barrel but getting a book rebound is probably something you're not realistically going to ever do and most of these have sort of vinyl-esque covers and they're going to get scratched just kind of accept it it's kind of just a part of the hobby instead of being afraid of your books always being in mint condition just kind of accept it and really it just shows that you use them a lot and really care about them it also may, some people see it as you don't care for it, but just ignore them. But these kind of books are going to run you usually between $25 and $60, depending on the quality and the individual brand. Some books you pay more just for the brand. That trip to the shooting range with my girlfriend, I spent $105. That's a lot of money, but I had a great time with her. She paid for the food, I paid for the shooting range. It's a great deal. I feel that that trip with her was easily worth three of those books. Probably worth the whole collection, really. But again, that's a time and a memory. These are things you can go back and read and take a trip down memory lane. This is a target that I can look at and remember that time. So when you buy an RPG book, really ask yourself, and when you're setting up a collection, really ask yourself, what are you setting up for you? Is it more for you? For your friends? For those you care about? Why do you do what you do? This isn't a question I'm going to answer, or I even can't answer, and you don't have to tell me. But it's something you should ask yourself as you go along. I shoot at targets because they represent self-improvement to me. And it's sort of a thing that I feel most men should know how to do. For example, I was aiming for, I wanted to shoot him between the eyes to show her I could and that I cared. And I did. And I'm very happy that I was able to. But the next couple times I go to the shooting range, I want to be able to shoot him, you know, I want to get my shot grouping closer together. It's a visible goal that I can project for myself. I can get better. 
and better with practice. You know, a lot of people talk about putting thousands of rounds down range. I think we shot around 150. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because we used the 38 Special and the 9mm. There were two targets for that. And I also shot the AR-15. I'll show you that target. I actually popped out the round to give her the last shot. My shot grouping was alright. See, that's my AR-15, and then Lindsay, she got her last shot. So all in all, shooting the AR-15, the Bread and 9 millimeter, and the 38 Special, Philbs felt pretty good, and she felt really empowered as a result, and that's that's worth it to me. So, anyways, guys, our hobbies, be it shooting or role playing games, are a part of our life, and it's something that we need to share with our friends and. You know, we usually make friends sharing them. But at the same time, you also have to realize that my girlfriend doesn't care about any of this. She doesn't. I don't blame her. <laughs> but hey, we still always have shooting and movies and whatever else we want to do. So just, next time you're at the store, kind of give second thought before you impulsively buy some stupid crap. Or, if you're feeling really down, just go ahead and buy that thing, so long as you know how to budget your money. I call it depression money. You know, money you have set aside just to buy something, whatever. You know, if you need a donut or a coffee or a pick-me-up. You know, set aside 20 bucks out of your budget. Just for whatever. Or if you just want more dice. Because who doesn't love dice? Anyways, this has been Will Hoyt trying to share my side of our little hobby. I hope you all had a wonderful time. Oh, I almost forgot one thing in my collection. <sighs> there we go. Keep forgetting you're there. It's because I set it aside, intending to read it, but it wasn't with the rest of my stuff. There we go. That's everything. Will Hoyt, signing out.